at this very moment, Britannia burns. This is my problem. Uh, the, if I may go on a brief tangent and tell Please. you a story. Um, I recently did a, recorded a brief review of Final Fantasy XIV, another MMO, mm -hmm. and I quit within two hours. Mm. I couldn't go on. I, I, I could not go on. Because I, didn't get out of the, I didn't get out of the tutorials because the first quest that you're tasked with, this noble hero, the first thing that happens in the story, the opening video, by the way, is you running away from a fight. Mm. Like, you're in a wagon, and the, the, the wagon is attacked by orcs or whatever like that. And so this elf who's guiding you on the, on the trail, he goes, Run, I'll cover you! And he runs off and he engages like three orcs. And you just look from the wagon and go, Wow, that guy's really brave. And you just keep going. Yeah. And I'm like, Yeah, I'm supposed to be helping here, and look what I get to do. And I just run off. Yeah. And my guy, by the way, I'm playing an archer. So I'm not even like, I'm not even like... <laughs> you couldn't even be sitting on top uh, riding shotgun. I couldn't even pretend to help, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so the first quest you get during the tutorial, and I know this is the tutorial. Mm -hmm. The first quest you get is delivering pie. Mm, second quest. Heroic. Second quest. It goes, first you need to master the bow. Go out and kill, what is it? It goes, uh, kill, three, uh, kill three rabbits and ladybugs. Wow, so we went from rabbits, rabbit. which isn't that... Oh, that squirrels. I'm sorry, squirrels. But squirrels squirrels or rabbits would at least be a mammal. Squirrels and ladybugs. But ladybugs, yeah, I think that kind of you know takes your heroism notch down one even more than usual. So I'm like, you're making me... The first thing you're making me do in this game mm -hmm. is go kill mm -hmm. ladybugs. And like, this is not exactly lighting my world on fire. This is not like I'm going down to be the conquering hero. I'm not even being conquering hero. I want to feel like... A hero. I'm going out there and I'm <laughs> stepping on squirrels. Well, that's also like you know when I, when I play um, you know you know in a po in a world post Ultima Online, post EverQuest, post Worlds of Warcraft, um, all, all three of which are the games I, I, I admire a lot. I mean, obviously it was part of uh, Ultima Online, of course, but I mean I, I'm, a, I'm a big admirer and a fan of EverQuest and especially Worlds of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's tons of things they did incredibly well in that game. Um, and a lot of the games that have been produced since, especially in the MMO world, have basically been retoolings or reimaginings of those fundamental game mechanics, more even than Ultima's. They're, more games are built in the EverQuest and EQ model. Uh, that is EQ, uh, EQ and WoW model. Um, but, and a lot of them are free to play, and mm -hmm. a lot of them are from Asia. And so there's been this, this swamp of, uh, of these relatively easy to play, relatively beautiful, screenshots are beautiful, uh, the level of animations and combat details are incredibly gorgeous. Uh, you know, games that come over, and so for there was a couple of years where I would try to play as many of those as I can to go like, wow, these seem really great. And you load them up, and you go through character creation. Then you spend the first hour or two creating your character to get mm -hmm. your face just right because you're not sure if you get a chance to do it again once you're in the game. Yeah. So you can't just bypass it. So you've got to take the time to get it right. You're never going to see your character's face ever again. Right. But you don't know that. You yeah. don't know how it's going to. So you can't just bypass it. So you bother to take the time at least an hour, sometimes two. Yep. Then you arrive in the game and you're going, oh look, it's a beautiful town, and there is the armorer over here. There's the magic shop over here. Uh, there's, you know, the food shop over here, there's the whatever else. The crafting there. stations. Crafting station over there, and oh look, there's people with exclamation points over their heads. Exclamation points, yeah. And so you go click on the guy with the exclamation point, then you get the bubble menu. So you go, yeah, 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 that's that's that, yeah, whatever. Yellow marker, whatever. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then you get a quest log, and then you get a marker on the ground, and that takes you out to your level one mining fields for monsters. Yep. And immediately I'm going like, I just spent three hours to get to here. Yeah. And I'm going, this is exactly this. You I mean, the graphic might be beautiful. Yeah. But it's the exact same game as every other game. Yeah. And um, uh, and that's really, really, really what we're desperately trying to avoid. Yeah, you want to strive to avatar. You're trying to reward exploration and stuff like that. Right. Betrayal! Betrayal! Betrayed me! Why doesn't Lord British um, help the people of Britannia by healing the sick and wounded? <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, well, didn't you say he was an asshole a little earlier? Yeah, no, well, I mean, like, he could maybe, like, <laughs> invite people who are terminally ill or mm -hmm. wounded with um, uh, sword injuries or, like, the military, and he could use his infinite healing ability to, like, restore their hit points. That would be a great idea, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, maybe he should take on an advisor. Maybe he should put an advisor council and have Spoonie, you know, on the sitting at the round table to give him such sage advice. Yeah. Um, 
why does he keep hiring Chuckles if, uh, if, if, if I keep killing him? Uh, and is, is Chuckles one person, or is he just like a post? Like, is, is, is Chuckles... <laughs> That's a very good point. Uh, you know, Chuckles, uh, you know, as a lot of the early Ultimate characters are, they're named after real people as often as not. And uh, Chuckles is one of the authors for Origins Early Products that did uh, Laugh Pack and uh, Cowards of Callisto and uh, Auto Duel yeah. and uh, a bunch of other early games. So Chuckles is a real person and um, uh, one of the co-founders actually of Origin. Um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, Chuckles and, and YOLO, uh, you know, both to my mind are, 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 are fixtures in... Uh, in Lord British's life. Why don't we see triple crossbows anymore in the Ultima games? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I would say that's just an oversight. That, that, you know, the, you know there's, there's so many parts and moving parts and pieces that you, know, you delegate, you know, there's team members who do nothing but make weapons, there's team members who make nothing but avatars, there's team members who make nothing but props, you know, bottles and kegs and tables and chairs. And, uh, and uh, the triple crossbow I think is, uh, has only just um, not uh, shown up just because uh, the people in charge of the combat Pieces just hasn't uh, crossed their deck, but I, yes, but I, I like it. I, I demand triple crossbows. All right, well, with your seat at the round table, we'll, we, we've now got uh, Lord British to get off his ass and, and help. Start healing people. He's like, and, uh, and bring the triple crossbows back. So we've got two pieces of sage advice so he far. Wouldn't, he wouldn't even do that in Underworld 2. He's just like, yeah, I can't help you, and my healing doesn't work. I don't know why. And he's just... <laughs> <laughs> and so now, so now here's a game design question for you now. So do you think that if it, in, 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 with Lord British in this new Spoonie advised method, should you, see, should you see Lord British's castle where perhaps there is like a, a side entrance where there's a queue of all these lame and sick people and every break Lord British gets between, you know, he, he, he works really hard to pass a few laws and then wipes the sweat off his brow and rushes down the stairs and goes to that side entrance and lays on hands as many people as he can until he's just exhausted from well, that and then he runs well, back upstairs and tests well, is, is, is it taxing on him? I don't know. We've never I, don't know. I know, I'm asking you. We've never established this. Yeah, I mean, but what would you like what would he what should he do in your mind's eye? If he well, was not such a lame lord, what would he do? Well I mean we've established that in even in Ultima Nine, when he's a when he's an old guy that he just whenever he feels like it, he can just get up and go down the abyss by himself. He's just like he's like, well, I need to go stop Lord Blackthorn, so and he go. goes up there and he just goes through the abyss. Mm -hmm. Like, it takes the Avatar fully decked out and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. It takes me hours to go down there. Lord British, he's just like, okay, oh, let's go. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> he just goes down there because he's mm -hmm. boss. You know, well, which might mean that a better solution to that is he may he may uh, to not be so boss. We may we want to make it clear uh, that he's not quite that boss if he's supposed to be more frail. Well, it, well, that's the thing is, is he, he going to be quite so frail because I mean his his body shape kind of fluctuates a little bit like if you, does. if you see in a in, if you see in underworld 2 he's like this he's like this big jolly guy he's all renfair like you know he's he's seriously like 300 he looks like uh like uh <laughs> he looks like king baratheon <laughs> he's like <laughs> he looks like the it, it, he, it is funny almost every ultima i give the artists you know one charge or one of the charges yeah, please make Lord British look a little, at least a little like me. Oh, no, no, he, uh, he looks like the king <laughs> from the the CDI Legend of Zelda game. He's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think the closest there's there's a couple verses they have the Lord British that look a little bit like the Burger King and me, but uh, uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, they, they rarely actually look much like me. In Martian Dreams, does the Avatar ever remark that um, that he's already been to Mars once before? <laughs> you mean from Ultima One? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. No, I don't think he knows that. But that would be true. Because I mean, that's like he's sitting on the sitting on the sitting on the rocket next to Sigmund Freud, man. Mm -hmm. Like you know, he's talking like, oh, yeah, dude, been there, I've done that. <laughs> been there once before. Come on, you, you ever? Oh, you ever, that bad. You ever been to that one place, the the town full of jesters? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that place was a riot. I killed everyone. There was a town full of jesters there. It's a new jester. That's right. Wow. Wow, wow. And that's, a, of course, that goes back to the old, uh, you have very few assets, you, lose them, you use them all very creatively. Rise from your grave. Of course, my crap, my skill as a writer in games also went up over time. And so, uh, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, you know, hopefully the uh, the amount of clues that were given out improved with time, or the accuracy of the clues were given out over time. You know, my favorite counter example was in Ultima 3, I believe this is, where you had to type words, like you type name and job and health and give people a sure. response. 
but I didn't, you know, in, in case people might say names, I always stopped at four letters. Sure. Because I thought there was enough letters to differentiate between most relevant words and, and avoid things like past and present and plural and other variations of a word that you might ask about. Mm -hmm. And, but the problem was, is, or one of the many problems was, I'm also a terrible speller. And there was a clue in Ultima 3 where you had to go ask another character about the altar, spelled <laughs> A-L-T-A-R correctly. But the person you had to go ask about the altar, what the four letters they were looking for was A-L-T-E for altar. And because they misspelled it. And there was really, there was no way you could figure it out. I mean, literally, if you didn't just by chance misspell the word altar, at the same time I misspelled the word altar, you could not finish that game. Yeah. And so to this day, I have no idea how the people who finished the game finished the game. Because this was before the internet and everything else, you, there were no patches. You and could look through the code. You, yeah, but... You know, and and but there were, I don't even think there were bulletin board systems yet, so there was no. really there was really no way to disseminate the information to people of, oh no, when you get to this point, please misspell like I do. I, I remember back in the day, they yeah, when there was BBSs, uh, there was when there was bulletin board services, they would they could distribute patches that way. But yeah, when you shipped a game back then, you, just, you shipped a game. Or okay. another one, I bet you didn't even probably notice this one. Um, also in Ultima Three. After Ultima 3, which was Origin's first product, that was the first time I ever received letters from anybody who had played the game. And one letter that I received said, oh, you know, Lord British, I love this game, and it was so great because, and one of the reasons I'm saying it was so great, was because I was trying to defeat this dragon, I couldn't defeat him, couldn't defeat him, you so I switched to my dagger. Oh, no, no. In this case, they said they switched to their dagger, and they killed the, da they killed the dragon, like one blow with the dragger, dagger. How great was that? And I'm going like, it sounds like just luck. You know, I'm going like the dragon must have been 99% dead and they did their one extra point with the dagger. But I said, I'll go look in the code anyway. And so I did that. I looked in the code to see how the damage routines worked. And it turns out what weapon you were using was irrelevant. The actual code was written in such a way that as you got leveled up, your increase of level did increase the amount of damage that you did. Mm -hmm. But in fact, the weapon you had in hand did not matter. And so, and it's just an oversight because back in these days, again, the only QA person was me, and it seemed to work, and yeah. uh, and there, there literally was no other QA person other than myself, and I just never, you know, since since as you get tougher, you're generally picking up a bigger weapon, yeah, and the monsters are falling at what feels like the right rate, yeah, and so that's all that mattered. I'm just buying better weapons. Buying so better weapons. I'm hitting but, harder. But it turns out you didn't need to. <laughs> it's a placebo effect, though. It is. It's it a placebo effect. Just felt better. It does feel better. So what's up with the Time Lord? Oh, he hadn't been back in a while, uh, you know. But of course, that's another homage. That goes back to you know, uh, 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 you know, the Doctor Who. But is it? That's where it was sourced from. But because he seems such a distant figure that he doesn't do he doesn't, he doesn't do, do anything really. He doesn't do Doctor Who things. He just yeah, that's true. But uh, but that's really but just like the, uh, the the the. the the, the original Moon Gates, which were sure. uh, you know uh, pretty direct from uh, uh, Time Bandits, mm -hmm. uh, that really is what it was sourced out of. Was my, my enthusiasm for Doctor Who, but uh, but I never really he was sort of somebody that kind of came in and um, um, you know never really got developed further. So yeah, he's a bit of a mystery even to me. Um, I, I hypothesized once that the that the Tie Fighters in Ultima One were actually the Kilrathi from the Wing Commander series because there's a Kilrathi ship in the Black Gate. So that, well, that's a very good rationalization, reverse rationalization, and I'll go with that. So like, I was thinking maybe Mondain had uh, allied with the Kilrathi because it's established now that the Kilrathi and and you know Chris Roberts with the, his new Star Citizen. Exactly. Um, you know we have been collaborating collaborating of late about how to do some cross activity and so uh, you know we have a YOLO designed crossbow that will both be a traditional bow in our world and a techno bow, bow nice. like, like a you know uh, uh, like from Star Wars uh, uh, you know in uh, his game as well so uh, and, and we've been talking about uh, you know I know you have a hoe of destruction hanging at your, your fireplace mantle dude and uh, uh, that's another thing that we're uh, we're debating is you know how to you know tie our games and fictions back together in a similar way.
reminds me of another Easter egg that I must mention. Ah. Um, which is we had an employee, a guy named John, who, uh, you know, designers usually had control of one area of the map as they were building it out. This is Ultima 6, I believe. And, uh, uh, and one of the QA testers came to us one day, came to me and a couple of the other managers, and said, hey, I, I found something that's kind of strange in the mountains, built into the mountains in this obscure corner of the world. <laughs> and he found this place that was dug out of the mountains, and inside that place that was dug out of the mountains was the object to solve every quest, I saw that, giant yeah. piles of gold, all this other kind of stuff was piled in this room. But there was no access, there was no entrance. Yeah. And so we said, okay, obviously somebody has, somebody's got a teleporter somewhere in the world to teleport here. So we had to have a programmer go write code to scan the world for teleporters to find one that ended in its destination in this area. And sure enough, we found one. And it was over in this guy John's area of the map that he was working on. And so we're going, okay, John has obviously built himself a back door to come here into this space. And we thought, it's not cool in a number of levels. One, he didn't have, you know, Easter eggs are cool, but you need, if you got one that's that powerful, you need to, we need to talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, and the way you would get into it was not well hidden. Yeah. And so we decided, we, we first, we liked the space enough to where we made a new teleporter to get there that was under our control that yeah. was well hidden and hard to activate. We made his teleporter go to a new place in the mountains. The, the, the cheater, the one where Lord British yes, calls you a cheater? And exactly. So that when he would play the game and he would enter the place, it would go, John, you dishonest thieving scumbag. You know, you are found guilty of treason and the sentence is death. Yeah. And then all these uh, fireballs. And I remember there's one where the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders are there. And they, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one where there's a bunch of cheerleaders there with all the, the weapons and they're just like, they're dancing in the weird cheating room. Could be, could be. Weird cheat room. I think it's time for us to wrap this little chapter of our interview up. All right. But no doubt we'll have more later. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Richard, thank you so much. For thank you for being here. It is an honor and privilege to have you here in our office and get the chance to talk to you face to face. Likewise, likewise. So signing off for now. So this is where you are, huh? You think you can go independent on me? Well, let me see what a real independent studio can do, okay? What do you do, sir? Oh, I'm, I'm working on secret doors, right? Blacks! That's what you want all day, blacks! I can hire a monkey to create blacks. He will put linking logs together. I see no gaming. You look like a businessman. I like businessmen. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. That's what I'm working on here. You see, I've got a lot of screens open. Uh, uh -huh. But I am working on the game. You're just farting around on the internet! Exactly. How is exactly. the profit margins? Really good, right? <laughs> and then we'll pack it the money later, okay? <laughs> yeah, but don't tell anybody. Don't tell Richard, okay? You all right? Oh, wait, wait, wait! What are you working on? My bag of cookies! <laughs> Your bag of cookies are fired! Then you'll be sorry that you went in the present. There's one final place I need to visit in this freaking company. And that is the most useless division of them all! The artist division! Come here, let me show you how to deal with the artists. Show me what you're working on. Uh, boots? <laughs> boots! Boots! That's, did you create this yourself or did you steal this from Google Images? Some of it's stolen. Oh, you bastard! No way, actually, I like that. What about you, sir? What are you working on? Boots. Boots as well! I know what I'll do. I'll start my own Kickstarter. And then, I I'll just hire a development team. I'll create mine Jack Fair and sell it and keep all the money. <laughs> Perfect! Perfect! Get me out of this place!
Ha, 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 ha,